Republicans warning President Obama to get ready for a fight as they get ready to unveil their new debt limit plan. So what is the GOP's plan? House Majority Leader Eric Cantor joins us. Nice to see you, sir. Greta, good to be on. Before we get to the debt scene, I want to ask you about today's vote, 217 to 210 on food stamps, which strips $38 billion over 10 years from the food stamp program. The Senate has a, has a plan that's only $4 billion. So what's going to happen? Well, first of all, let, let's look at what the bill did today, uh, Greta. And, you know, look, nobody chooses to be on food stamps. I, I think most people would say they want a job. And, you know, we, people who are in need of help should have it. And this bill does provide uh, for anyone that is uh, in need of that help will get it. Uh, but what it also says is the dignity of a job is what things should be about in these programs. And in fact, going back to 1996, when a uh, Republican Congress worked with President Bill Clinton, they overhauled the welfare program in this country and instituted a workfare requirement. And that's all this does. And what it says is if you're able bodied, you should be willing to work. Not that you have to have a job because there's many parts of the country that don't have jobs, but that you could go and participate in community service activities or workfare program. And again, most people would say, no, I don't want a life of dependency. I want to be it, able to get back to work. Does and, the bill lower the eligibility so that we still people, I mean, is that what this is going to ultimately do? How, is, is, is that the, the critical piece of the House action today had to do with the work requirement. And it said, because what's happened of, since 2009, President Obama has essentially issued nationwide waivers to the work requirement. And that was what allowed the 1996 welfare reform to be so successful that people actually came off the welfare rolls because they were back into productive mode. That's what we're trying to do to people. We are not saying that there shouldn't be a safety net. Certainly there should be. And this is all about, frankly, uh, able-bodied people going back to work. And think about it. If somebody is abusing the system or if somebody somehow gets used to a life of dependency, how is it fair for the working middle class of this country to have overtime to go to work two jobs to help pay for that? That's the right. fairness in all of this, right, well, is to help people. Well, it's going to run into a fight over in the Senate. All right, let me turn now to the question of um, the, continue, the debt ceiling. And um, in the House, I assume that there's going to be an effort to defund Obamacare as part of a deal to raise the debt ceiling. President Obama said he's not going to negotiate. In fact, President, uh, Speaker Boehner is an ad out today. Over in the Senate, Senator Cruz had originally said that it was going to pass the whole, the continued resolution would pass, and they wasn't going to filibuster or try to fight it. Today he's changed his mind. So where do we stand? Well, Greta, what, let's step back for a second and see what we're really trying to do here. And what we're trying to do initially uh, is to pass um, a temporary spending bill so we can hammer out a budget. And, you know, we're trying to keep government spending levels heading down. We all know the problem in this town. It's all about spending. And we're trying to address that. And frankly, we are now at a point that we could be entering the second year of reduction in actual spending at the discretionary level of government spending. That's been the second year, and that hadn't happened since the Korean War. All right, so, but what's the story with Senator Cruz? There was some sort of suggestion there was a feud between Senator Cruz and the House Republicans. Well, uh, you know, listen, uh, Senator Cruz, Senator Lee, Senator Rubio have said that they're going to do everything and anything that they can to stop Obamacare. I support them in their efforts to do so, and we've actually given them what they want because this bill is coming over to them, and I know. And I support the fact that they're going to leave no stone unturned I, to stop this bill and to stop Obamacare. But that's, that's, a mess, that's a message to them. They better filibuster, right? Well, listen, they have said that they're going to do anything. I support that effort. Listen, House Republicans since 2009 have been leading the charge to stop Obamacare. You know, we've said all along that this bill is going to raise health care prices. It's going to be bad for jobs. We're seeing that our economy is turning into a part-time job economy because of the bill. We've got to stop it. We're doing everything in the House to do so. And I know that we're all joining in support with these senators that they'll do anything they can to stop Obamacare. Right. So either they're going to lose or they're going to not fight it. And, and that bill is going to come back to the House clean, meaning that the continuing resolution will come back to the House minus the provision to defund Obamacare. Then what happens? Now, let, 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 wait a minute, Greta. Let's not assume anything here because uh, the senators and the Republicans 
Republicans have decided that they're going to do anything they can. So you have confidence. So I, I am, and I support it. I don't think we should be betting against them. And, let, and remember, this puts the Democrats like Kay Hagan in North Carolina and Mark Pryor in Arkansas and Mark Begich in Alaska and uh, Senator Landrieu in, New, in Louisiana in a tough position. Obamacare has huge impacts in those states. These are Democratic senators that are up for re-election. Let's see how they respond, because they also have to be held to account for Obamacare. Well, we'll get, we'll get that chance to see what happens. Leader, it's always nice to see you, sir. Thank you. Pleasure, Greg.